two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours traffic of our stage, the which if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague's. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. <laughs> Tis true, and therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Here, come to her, the house of Montague. Huh? Quarrel, quarrel. I will back thee. Now, turn thy back and run. Let's run the country this morning. You cannot do better than this. I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. Everything is appreciated. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Come, come, come.
Heartless hinds, turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. A servant of the Capulets has killed Abraham. Abraham has been killed on the piazza by a Capulet. What happened? What happened? Abraham has been killed. What happened? What's this? Abraham! Abraham! Oh, where's my man? Where's my man? Oh, traitor! What noise is this? The Capulets! Oh, Lord, what is it? <laughs> Abraham is dead. Pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. Three civil brawls bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. Cousin, is the day so young? But new struck nine. Ah me, sad hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor, where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Why then, O oh, brawling love, O oh, loving hate, O oh, anything of nothing first create, O oh, heavy lightness, serious vanity, Dost thou not laugh? No cause. I rather weep. Good heart at what? Thy good heart's oppression. Why? Such is love's transgression. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Farewell, my cousin. Soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut. I have lost myself. I am not here. 
This is not Romeo. He is some other way. Tell me, in sadness, who is that you love? Did a sick man in sadness make his will? Ah, word ill urge to one that is so ill. Oh no. Calls. Your mother. Where's my drink? Come quick, quick. Oh. Okay, quick. Madam, I, I am here. Oh. What is your will? This is the matter. Uh, nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me thou shalt hear our counsel. <laughs> thou knowst my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. How long is it now to Lammas time? Even or odd. Of all days of the year, come Lammas Eve at night, shall she be fourteen. Susan and she. God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But, as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be forty. That shall she marry. I remember it well. It is since the earthquake now, eleven years, and she was weaned. Oh, I never shall forget it. For then she could stand high alone. Nay, by the rule, she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow. And then my husband, God be with his soul, was a merry man, took up the child, yea, quoth thee, dost thou fall upon my face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Julie? <laughs> and by the holiday, the pretty wretch left crying and said, I, <laughs> I warrant that I should live a thousand years. I would have prevented. Wilt thou not, Julie, quoth he? <laughs> and pretty fool, it stinted and said, I. <laughs> and stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse. Say, I. Peace. I have done. God mark thee to his grace. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. <laughs> Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? To marry? Mm -hmm. It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor? <laughs> Were not I thine only nurse? I'd say thou had sucked wisdom from thy teeth. <laughs> an honor? Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, Ladies of esteem are made already mothers. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. But saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And too soon marred of those so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes, but she. But woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, where too I have invited many a guest such as I love. And you among the store, one more most welcome makes my number more. But my will to her consent is but a part. Madam, Julie, come quickly, you can see them.
What say? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read all the volume of young Paddy's face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. I look to like, if looking liking move, but no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Oh. To the feast of Capulet goes the fair Rosalind, whom he so loves. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. <laughs> A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest. Hit! <laughs> look, look, Esther! Good evening, my lord. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, in that hit, you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed. From love's weak childish bow she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes. Oh, she is rich in beauty. Only poor that when she dies with beauty dies her store. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead that live to till it now. Tut, man. One fire burns out, another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be helped by backward turning. <laughs> One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh. Teach me how I should forget to think. Examine other beauties. Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. One fairer than my love. The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. <laughs> Young one did you? Yeah. Hey, get rolled out. Oh. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Julie. 
Juliet. The Countess Days. Quick, quick, quick. Oh. Go, girl. Seek happy nights, the happy days. Oh. <laughs> Solemnity this night. My fair ladies, my noble lords, now the musicians of St. Jerome will play for you the beautiful galliard, Iovini in Calviso Primavera. And uh, Young Romeo, is it? It is he. That villain, Romeo. Town here in my house during this punishment. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. <laughs> I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. <laughs> you must contrary me. Marriage is time. <laughs> oh, I have seen the day that I have worn a visor. <laughs> I could. Uh, Tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear. For shame, I'll make you quiet. Oh, what, what chill in my heart? You're a brick of gold. <laughs> Oh, 
she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty, too rich for use, for earth, too dear. What lady's that that doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine. The gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which manly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that Pilgrim's hands to touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints' lips, and holy palmer's too? I, Pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou. Lest faith turn to despair. Madam, your mother craves a word. Oh! What oh. is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. 
Is she a Capulet? Good night, my heart. Go, ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. My life is my foe's debt. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Why, where the devil should this Romeo be? Carry Romeo! Romeo! Hey, the half-hearted wretch that brought the line torments him so that he would sure run Romeo, down. my cousin Romeo! Romeo! <laughs> oh, he's gone! He's mad. He is wise. <laughs> and upon my life had stolen him home to bed. Call! <laughs> call! 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 Call, good Mercutio. Call? <laughs> <laughs> Nay, a conjure too. Oh. Romeo, humors, madman, passion, lover. Oh. <laughs> Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. <laughs> Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Ah. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, 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 let's go to him. <laughs> Come. <laughs> <laughs> I conjure thee by Rosalind's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lips, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the domains that there adjacent lie. <laughs> and if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. My invocation is fair and honest. In his mistress' name, I conjure only but to raise up him. Oh. <laughs> Come, shall we go? Let's go. Well, then, for it is but vain to seek him here. That means not to be found. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> I conjure thee, my providence, my my He jests at scars that never felt a wound. What light through yonder window breaks? I 
away in me. Be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a captive. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, thou art not a Montague. What's Montague? It is no hand, no foot, no arm, no face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Oh, Romeo, doff thy name. And for that name, which is no part of thee, take all my Take me at thy word. Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of this town's utterance. Yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either be disliked. How oh, came thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb. With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls. For stony limits cannot hold love out. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued wanting of thy love. By whose direction found'st thou out this place? By love, that first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say, I. And I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. Do not impute this yielding to light love which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear that tips with silver all these fruit-free Oh, tops. swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? <laughs> Do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, and I'll believe thee. Good night. This bud of love, by summer's ripening breath, may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. I hear the noise within me. Dear love, adieu. Julia, and on good nurse. You be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I 
am afeard being in night, all this is but a dream. Too flattering, sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage. Send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee. Where and what time thou wilt perform the rite. And all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay. And follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. So thrive, my soul. A thousand times. Good night. A thousand times. I love. I shall forget to have thee still stand there. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget. <laughs> prisoner in his twisted jives and with a silk thread plucks it back again so loving jealous of his liberty i would i would i bet. sweet so would i yet i would kill thee with much cherishing good night good night Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Good night. Gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. Now, ere the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. The earth, that's nature's mother, is her tomb. What is her burying grave? That is her womb. And from her womb, children of diverse kind, we sucking in a natural bosom find. Oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. Within the infant rind of this weak flower. Within the infant rind of this. Oh. Within the infant rind of this weak flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt with that part cheers each part. Being tasted, slays all senses with the heart. Oh.
Good morning, Father. Benedicite. No, no, no. Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruited youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs, there golden sleep doth reign. Therefore, thy earliness doth me assure, thou art uproused by some distemperature. <laughs> Or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true. The sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father? <laughs> no, I have forgot that name and that name's world. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? Where, on a sudden, one hath wounded me that's by me wounded. Both our remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man. For lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Then plainly. No, my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. No. As mine on hers. So hers is set on mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. Now, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Jesu Maria. What a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. And thou art changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chidst me oft for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And that's me very love. Not in a grave, to lay one in, another out to her. I pray thee, chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love alone. The other did not so. In one respect I'll thy assistant be, for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. But chance she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Oh. Love's herald should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams. Give me leave a while. 
Fie, how my bones ache. Oh, what a jaunt of a Nick, how I pray thee, speak. Good goodness, speak. <clears throat> Jeez, you what haste. Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? Uh. <laughs> Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is good or bad? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and, I warrant, a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou replies, your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to church tomorrow? I have. For naught so vile that on the earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor aught so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice being misapplied. Two such opposed foes encamp them still in man, as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant... It is she. And where the worser is predominant... Oh, let us go, Father. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. smile the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death, do what he dare. Ego coniungo vos in matrimonium, in nomine patris. 
et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain, am I not? Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and go. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good captain, which name I tender as dearly as mine own. Be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonor of vile submission. Alastair Carter carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher. Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats. Mercutio. Good. King, cats, nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. And as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out to his pilcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears ere it be out. And for you, gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir, your passado. Draw back, Olio. Be down their weapons. <laughs> Gentlemen, for shame. The prince expressly hath forbid this banding in Verona streets. Ho, oh, Tybalt. Good Mercutio. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Good Mercutio. Oh, why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. Uh, courage, ma'am. 
the hurt cannot be much. It is not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door. It is enough to serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I'm peppered, I warrant, for this world. A plague on both your houses. Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio's dead. Way to heaven, respective lenity, and fire out fury be my conduct now. Now, tell! Take the villain back again that link thou gainest me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads. Staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Oh, wretched boy that didst consort him here shalt with him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Slain. Stand not amazed. The prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence away, be gone! Oh, I am fortune's fool. <laughs> shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours' wife, have mangled it. But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? Romeo, that spoke him fair, 
better me think how nice the quarrel was, and urged with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, would not take truce of the unruly spleen of Tybalt deaf to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who, all as hot, turns deadly point to point. Romeo, he cries aloud, Ho, friends, friends, part! And swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points and twixt them rushes. Underneath whose arm, an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife. And all those twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who then the price of his dear blood doth owe? Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Banishment. How oh, banishment? Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. <laughs> Do not say banishment. <laughs> Hence from Verona art thou banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Heaven is here, where Juliet lives. And every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Hast thou no poison mixed, no sharp drawn knife, no sudden mean of death, though near so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it. Hear me but speak a word. Thou canst not speak of that, thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet my love, and I were but married, Tybalt's murderer, doting like me, and like me, banish it. Then mightst thou speak. I 
come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Oh, Holy Friar. Oh, tell me, Holy Friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress's case. Just in her case. Speaks thou of Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of her joy with blood removed, but little from her own. Where is she? And how does she? And what says my consul lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. And now falls on her bed and then starts up, and Tybalt calls, and then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. <laughs> stand up, stand up, stand and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an oath? Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are woman. <laughs> Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Make haste. Thank you, my lord. Romeo! tears back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's death that would have slain my husband. All oh, this is comfort, wherefore we by them. <laughs> 